Falcons defense. Both coaches talked about how important the possession battle would be today. First draw, and a ground ball. Hopkins again in the black today. Penn State in their white with the navy blue trim. Ground ball still available. Ultimately scooped up by the Nittany Lions. And will get us underway. Tough ground ball by Will Peden. Penn State has two players in 16 bombing away from deep. And he calmly slots it down to Melendez, who slips it past Frasion. So to your point there, Mark, Matt Collison is a 19-year-old freshman, but the coach has told us he almost comes off as older than some of the other players. And it's his patience in that moment that really pays dividends for Hopkins. Yeah, he's done a great job this year. I think Frasion thought it was going to stay a little bit lower when it kicked up and surprised him. Nice shot, Melendez. Passes it past the ear of Frasion. We spoke to Coach Millen about Russell Melendez. Called him a, a unique piece, gifted physically, and skilled with both hands. We're seeing how dynamic he is in the early stages of this game. He, up until late, had been a hot and cold player. He'd give you three goals, then double donuts, then four goals, then double, you know, very inconsistent. And that's just confidence and poise. Getting the goalie to move before you take the shot. The first Hopkins player with four goals in a quarter since Joey Epstein had five in a second quarter against Towson in 2022 last year. So Melendez with the hot hand. And Jack Hawley, 26 in black. He is in black, gets down the alley and is able to slink it past Frasion. Penn State. A little bit of danger zone time here. Three nothing. I'm like, yeah, you know, these guys can come back. Four nothing. No need to. Was <laughs> terrific. I mean, that was a smooth stroke with pace and placement. Is a special shot, and thus far in the game, that's what Tony's Nittany Lions has. 24 goals on the season now. He's sophomore. So Russell Melendez has. Four of the five Hopkins goals. Beautiful. Didn't have a ton of pace on it, but just the, the location of it. The faceoff trend that you were watching continues in favor of Penn State. Eight to two now, Mark. Well, it, it, lacrosse is such an emotional game. In addition to the talent and the physicality and, and Penn State right now, they are feeling it. And Tim Marcel's rattled. Make it a 4-0 run now. That's Mark Sickler with the latest for the Nittany Lions. And the crowd is hyped up in State College. Sickler is the Swiss Army knife of this Penn State lacrosse team. During his career, he's played attack. He's been an offensive midi. Now he's a defensive midi, but he's allowed to stay on when Penn State gets possession because of shots like that. Just finds a soft spot in the Hopkins D. Penn State recognizes the opportunity for early offense, and Tim Marcio, after being sparkling early on, now struggling. Four consecutive shots for the Penn State Nittany Lions have found their way into the back of the net. Possession again for Penn State here, and Jeff Tembroni likes to keep us guessing as to where Mark Sickler will be position-wise. Slide, you leave Melendez, and he takes it with the worm burner, fifth on the night. Got five of the six Hopkins goals. Melendez had a four-goal game against Michigan prior to Hopkins' last win. Probably be all conference in his own right and made him look like a traffic cone. Malone's such an excellent finisher on the inside. You see you can get this ground ball possession again to Penn State. Off the hop here, they come Malone again. Big shot, and he scores. T.J. Malone's 22nd of the season. Penn State is starting to turn these face-off wins into pay dirt. We watched Malone's speed and athleticism. Now we're going to see his smarts and his stick skill. Ducks underneath the defense of Scott Smith. Increases his angle by tiptoeing the crease. Throws a couple stick fakes, gets Marcel off his line, and then puts it 
into the net. It was once a 5-0 lead for Johns Hopkins in favor of the Nittany Lions. Yeah, that, that face-off total really jumping out off the page. 11-2 in favor of Penn State. Make it 12-2. Well, now you got Naruski out for, blue, for the Blue Jays. So Hopkins has used three different face-off men. down the timeout but you know the timeout I thought would help Penn State is not allowing them to get comfortable but a huge face-off win for Naruski that is gigantic and see if Hopkins can answer back to try to tie if they don't India a few weeks ago a loss for Johns Hopkins and we'll see if he can ignite this face-off unit in the second half and right there that's a difference being made he created a 50-50 ground ball, gave Mazzone an opportunity to come in and make a play. And Penn State, they're going to win this faceoff. They come up with possession, but they had to work for it. And prior to that, more importantly than the goal, is that save by Marcel. That was a big stop to try to get his confidence back up, get him back into a rhythm. Certainly showed some confidence early. Made key saves. Benipiak going at it tonight for a national title. In hockey, see if the Gophers can pull it out. 8-7 lead for Penn State at Panzer Stadium. 5.20 to go in this third quarter. Been an excellent game. It has Hopkins making the faceoff more competitive, but you got to give a lot of credit to the Penn State wings. And then Jack Posey with the big boy ground ball. And Morin, one-on-one -on -one with Marcio finds the cage more than sixth goal of the season back-to-back -back games with goals comes from an athletic family his cousin Gina played softball at Penn State Garnet Valley Pennsylvania native gives Penn State their first multi-goal advantage of the evening that's turned tonight here in State College Peshko six Five-point game for him. His team up two goals. Entering the final quarter of regulation. Naruski wins the faceoff, but can he get out of trouble? That's a nice job paying it into space. Mazzone and Hawley combined for a tough ground ball. That's a huge faceoff win for him. when Amet retired. But injuries sideline Malone the last two seasons. He's got Amet burst with the goal scoring ability whereas Amen's burst was meant to free himself to be one of the best feeders college lacrosse has ever seen Malone has a look his defender beautiful shot and then a big face off win for Hopkins they come right back at it Frasione had to make a, make a save there Grimes now on a C number 50 in white point to his chest and say guys that one was on me Chase Mullins was able to win that faceoff. Expecting about 50-50 between Mullins and Bond today when it came to faceoffs for Penn State. Hides both coaches, Jeff Tambroni and Peter Milliman. Their teams have come to play as anticipated. Hopkins outscoring Penn State thus far in the fourth quarter, 3-1. Nittany Lions win. That one is overhand. And beats Frasion. It's kind of like welcome back to the party that you started. Yeah. Where you been? It's been on a been on a drink run. Now he just got back and scores again. Very important ground ball scooped up by Penn State. They try to tie it. Couldn't shot. Finds the far post. And we're tied up again. We made a wish for a good game and got an 11-11 tie. 203 to go in this fourth. Well, the root. trying to stay atop the Big Ten standings. They've won five in a row. How about the crowds this weekend? Been phenomenal. SHI Stadium was rocking. Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium last night. Picture of beauty and pandemonium right now. Electric. Penn State hasn't lost on this field yet this season. And they're trying to get to two and one in Big Ten play. Big face off here. Ground ball. 
50-50, who can find it? Hawley. Guy has sonar when it comes to ground balls off the face-off wing. So now here comes Hopkins offensively. They get the timeout. There's the whistle. Certainly heard it. Now here, Mark, of the regular season, which should be dramatic standings-wise, and this one certainly played a key role. First multiple overtime game for Hopkins since 2018 when they beat Maryland in triple overtime. The faceoff, Naruski continues to be a pesk. That was a key adjustment from Peter Milliman of Johns Hopkins at the half. Wow. Tough call at the box. It'll be Penn State possession here. Saw their sideline erupt. They wanted a delay of game, but they also wanted the quick restart. And that area around the bench is so hard to get a quick restart because of the subbing in and out. Let's take a look again at this faceoff. Naruski wins it. Great defense by Chase Mullins. Naruski kicks it to the corner. Could have been a push there on Penn State. And I think they called procedure as Naruski was laying on the ball. And the Penn State player couldn't dig it out. Wow, it's... You could have had a push there on the Nittany Lions. The procedure call gives the ball to Penn State. The timeout. And now, offensive coordinator John Haas will try to draw up the game winner. 3.37 to go in the second OT. Deadlocked at 11. John Hawes, the brother of Grant Hawes, his younger brother who plays for Penn State. See Coach Hawes drawing things up there. If you're Hopkins defensively here with the strategy. Well, stop, stop him from scoring. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't want TJ Malone.